Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, early voting for the June 4th primary in Doniana County currently underway. And throughout the week here on the KFOX 14 Morning News, we are having the district attorney candidates here in studio with us. Yes, and joining us this morning for our community conversation is Sherry Booth. Sherry, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, thank you for having me. All right, so tell us a little bit about yourself and why you are choosing to run for the district attorney position. So my name is Scheherazade Booth, but everyone calls me Sherry. Um, I was raised in a military family, uh, came to the community. We've been, my family's been in the community now for about 20 years. I was a prosecutor starting here in Doniana County, and then from there uh, did most of my prosecuting career as a deputy district attorney in Deming, uh, New Mexico. Um, you know, when deciding to run, I have a successful practice now in criminal defense work. I really love what I do. A lot of my friends were like, why would you leave your successful practice in order to run for office? But what I was watching is the failures and the systematic failures of a district attorney's office start to become problems in our community and start to make our community to be less safe. And let's talk a little bit more about that. Can you tell us more about what your priorities would be, your top priorities, I should say, if you were chosen to be in this office? So the first thing we have to do with this office is rebuild it, a complete restructure. Right now it's severely understaffed and the prosecutors that are there and the staff that are there are being forced to carry crazy workloads and crazy management. Because of that, that's why we're seeing these high levels of dismissals. We're seeing victims complain about not hearing from prosecutors or having four or five prosecutors switch through their cases. So the first thing we have to do when we get in there is hire experienced prosecutors, but two, to restructure so that it can function again. And Sue, so tell us how you plan to go about prioritizing some of the main issues, some of the main crime that may be plaguing the city of Las Cruces. Part of that restructuring would be to create a, a focus on repeat offenders. Um, you, I think people would be surprised to know that the repeat, repeat offender number of individuals is actually not that high, but the number of crimes that they're committing is. So if we can dedicate a prosecutor to figure out why it is that we have these repeat offenders and as of right now seem to not be able to do anything about it. We'll also place somebody with a focus in juvenile justice and the juvenile system because being able to have early intervention, especially with these children um, that may have been shut into their homes during COVID for years, and not have had access uh, to any kind of resources or could have been in dangerous environments, those children deserve the chance to not end up to be adults and criminals. And let's move on to talk more about the dismissal of cases. Can you talk about which cases you would choose to prosecute or how you would go about that process? And then also maybe what would you tell family members or victims who feel like their case was wrongfully dismissed? What I have found in my time as a prosecutor is that honesty, as cliched as it is, is truly the best way to go about it. If you can't prosecute a case, the worst thing you can do to a victim and their family is to give them false hope, to tell them that they're going to end up with some outrageous charge that could have never happened to begin with. And then when we go to trial and the judge dismisses it or there's a not guilty, you have filled this family with hope because maybe it's a lack of experience or maybe it's a lack of, of being able to be brave and step up and say these are the accurate charges. As far as what we will prioritize in dismissal or not, as of right now it really is about stopping the hemorrhage and being able to look at the cases going in and seeing what we have evidence for, what we have strong prosecution and where do we go from here. But once we're fully staffed and fully funded, everything's a priority. Just because there wasn't physical harm a window repeatedly broken to a business could mean that that business shutters and closes, which means then that that family might not be able to make their mortgage payment, which means that family may have to move, pull their kids from our school. And now we're down a successful part of our, our community because we didn't prioritize property damage. So again, once we're fully staffed, up and running and funded, then we have to turn and focus on all of them. All right, some great information there. Thank you so much for being here with us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. All right, if you're just tuning in right now, have 
miss this community conversation, we'll have a replay of it on kfoxtv.com as well as past community conversations. And like Selena said earlier, we have had other DA candidates as well. Yes, Sherry, thank you so much for being here with us today. Again, we really appreciate it. Some great thank insight. You. We'll be right back after this short break.